today's words are all computer based words so I suggest you get a, a highlighter and go through and highlight anything that will help you spell these words ease, more easily. So we've got website, the E is making the I make a long vowel sound. In scanner you've got the ER at the end, we quite often give that a schwat sound so just be aware that it is ER, scanner. You've got a short vowel here so that's telling you to double the N after it. Um, in modem, the O is making a long sound, so that means we've only got one consonant after a long vowel sound. In internet, we've got this R control vowel ER in the middle here, so just be aware that it's ER and not IR or UR. Um, monitor, we've got the OR on the end here, different from the ER further up. So um, just be aware of that. Now, a mon it or we tend to give it monitor we give it a schwat sound once again so you need to be aware of the spelling there now computer we've got the e after the er sound on the end now the o is making a short vowel sound so we've got two consonants after a short vowel sound in a multisyllabic word now just take note the consonant does not have to be the same so we've got an m and a p here they're different but we do still have two consonants after a short vowel. We've got a long vowel sound in the U, so that means we only have one consonant after a long vowel sound in a multisyllabic word. Now database, we've got the A making its broad sound R, data. Um, base, now the only reason there's an E on the end here, it's not to make the previous vowel make a long sound, but a, oh, it could be that too. But the other reason is because we want the S to say S, and we want to show that it's only one. If we want to make it databases, we'd have to put another S after um, the base word to make it into a plural. So this is just showing once again that it's a singular database, and it's also doing the double act of making the previous vowel make its long sound. Now in directory, we've got the IR control vowel at the start and the OR at the end. Y is the most common way of writing the long E sound in the end of a word. So do remember that. There are thousands of words that simply end in a Y for the E sound on the end of a word. Now algorithm is a really interesting word. When we add a L to the start of a word, we drop one L. So you can see that here, we've only got the one L. Now, I would say, um, this is probably a Greek word too. We, this is very unusual in an English word, so it's obviously not English. The last syllable does not have a vowel in it. And we know that a very common English rule is that every syllable must have a vowel. So that's telling you very strongly that this is not an English word. And considering that the... Um, that Greeks were our early mathematicians and scientists, so I would say that this probably comes from um, the Greek language. Same with encrypted. When we have Y's in the middle of words, it's telling us that it's probably a Greek word. So encrypted, you've got the ud on the end, making one of its three sounds. It could say ud, d, or t, but you know to write e -t, ed. And the Y here is making its short sound encrypted making an it vowel sound there. So you've got quite a few tricky things to remember in each of those words. Now what do the words mean? Website is a set of connected pages on the World Wide Web containing information on a subject. A scanner is a device for reading or monitoring or examining something and it can also convert documents into digital data. A modem is a device that sends and receives data from and to a computer. The internet is a computer network that provides and communicates information. A monitor is a device that observes, checks and records information. A computer is an electronic device for storing and processing data. A database is an organised set of information stored on a computer. A directory is, could be computer files made up of another set of files. And an algorithm is a set of rules or steps to be followed in calculations. And encrypted means um, it describes information that has been converted into code to protect its content.
You may like to go through the words and just highlight anything that will make the spelling easier, but then you need to do your read it, cover it, write it and check it. Now you're going to use these words up here to complete the crossword puzzle. As you work out each answer, cross the clue out here so you know which ones you have to go back and do. These um, clues go for um, the spaces going across the page and this, these are your set of clues for uh, words going down the page. Remember you only have one letter in each um, square and you have to include using the box with the number in it too. So you always start in the numbered box. At the top here you need to read, cover, write and check the words. Now down here we're doing verb families. Now in Computerize, we're actually doing the American spelling with the Z because it's the more common usage worldwide. Usually um, in um, British English we'd use SE unless the US version of ZE takes over and is, is more commonly used worldwide, so that's what's happened. So just be aware here when you're doing this that if you have a word ending in E, a base word like compute or computerize, um, you're going to take away the E when you add the ing here. Now the other thing that you need to look at is in scanning, to know whether to double that last letter of the base word when adding ing or ed is to go through our process of four questions. So first one, is it a short word? Scan, yes it is. Um, does it have a short vowel sound? Yes it does. Is there one consonant at the end of the word scan? Yes there is. Are we adding a vowel suffix? Yes we are in both cases. So that means we would double the N before adding the ing or the ED. Um, now if you have a word ending in E and you're adding, wanting to add ED, you don't need to add another E, you just add the D. And um, so let's go down here, make the new word and use it in a sentence. So work out what the structure of the word is when you, um, before you write it in a sentence. Now we're looking at plural nouns here, so you've just got to work out what, how are you going to change these words into plural form? Um, easy, bit harder, tricky. So remember if you have a consonant before the Y, you must change the Y to an I before you add the um, ES. Now hardware refers to the technology components that are physical objects. So write the four list words that are hardware. Fill in the gaps with the list word or extension, so think about the meaning of the word and what the structure of the word must be for it to apply correctly to the sentence that you're using it in. We did some research and we found that these um, pairs of words, we've given you three um, sets of pairs, are often tricky for people. They're some of the trickiest pairs that people cope with in their writing and reading. So for each pair, study the definitions and fill the gaps with the correct word, then write a sentence using each word correctly. Now affect is a verb, it means to create a change, and effect is a noun, meaning the result. So you have to fill these um, in correctly and then create a sentence of your own down here. Now, every day is an adjective, so it describes something commonplace or daily, whereas every day is a phrase. It's a noun, day, with a determiner. So we've got the every. Happening on all days versus rather than happening on one day or some days, etc. So she changed out of her something clothes into a ball gown. What's the structure of the word here? You can tell we're describing the clothes, so it's got to be an adjective, so there's a hint that it would be that one. You can work through the others on your own. Now, accept is a verb. It means to agree to receive or do something, whereas accept could be a preposition, meaning not including. It could be a verb, meaning excluded from a group. It could be a conjunction used before a statement to exclude something. So you have to work out which one goes in which sentence. So hopefully Owen will something the invitation to my party. So you have to work out which one would fit best there. Don't forget to write your own interesting 
um, sentence at the bottom. Now we've given you some other um, pairs of words that are troublesome. So you could discuss them within your group or within your class. It is important that you do know when to use each of them. So I think it will be worthwhile as a bit of homework or just discussion, as we've said.